Hello, so in this sociology revision video I'm going to talk through the different methods for measuring crime and as we can see from these images here um, this is something that the media are very uh, interested in reporting on crime, crime rates, something that you know we all kind of think about politicians are always very keen to talk about crime rates but when we delve into it we can see that it is something that we need to be wary of and we need to think about where we're getting these figures from. Okay, so there are three main methods for measuring crime. We've got police recorded statistics, so that's kind of police and court records. We've got victim surveys, including the CSEW, and we've got self-report studies. So in England, police recorded statistics and the CSEW are classed as official statistics. So if you had a question on official statistics, you could talk about police recorded crime and the CSEW because the government does that. That's classed as official statistics. Um, okay, so now on to the first method, police recorded crime statistics. So I'm going to go through the details of what these are and then some positives. So this is the crime that police record based on arrests, based on uh, you know criminal convictions, people being charged. So things that the police process, basically. Um, in terms of positives, they're up to date. You can access information from very very recently um there's lots and lots of data it's very cheap and easily to easily accessible you can access it very easily if you go online you can you can search by local area and look at different statistics on crime you can compare data over time so you can you know look at how crimes have risen or dropped over the years and there's no ethical issues for a sociologist using these. Um, you can access those without worrying that you're going to incriminate yourself or or somebody else. However, there's there's a few negatives. They're obviously based on police figures, so we've got to think about the nature of policing. Think about police discretion, police targeting. Certain groups are likely to be overrepresented. The police are more likely to be focusing on street crime than other types of crime, and therefore those involved in street crime are more likely to be overrepresented rather than those involved in crimes that are more hidden, for example, corporate crime. It also doesn't include unreported or unrecorded crime, which is known as the criminal iceberg or the dark figure of crime. So people might not report crimes because they're afraid, they might not think it's serious enough, they might not um, report to the police because they think that the police won't, won't take them seriously. Um, and then even if they do report it, it might not be recorded by the police because the police might think, well, we haven't got enough evidence. It's one word, one person's word against another. Or the police might think it's not serious enough. There's also these concepts of coughing, cuffing and skewing. So coughing is incentivizing criminals to admit to more crimes. So if they've got somebody, they might say, oh, you've committed a burglary here. There were other burglaries here in the past months. Will you admit to those? And it, they might not have done those. They might feel like they have to kind of admit to those. Cuffing is when crimes have initially been recorded and later removed. This is the idea that the crime goes up the the police officer's cuff, so it's kind of hidden. And skewing, police only focusing on certain crimes. So if there's a drive to clamp down on knife crime, for example, crime knife crime rates might go up because police are focusing on that more. So there are those issues. So what do the different perspectives say about police recorded crime figures? So the only two perspectives that are uncritical are functionalists and the new right. They're uncritical, they see the police as upholding the value consensus and they're not critical of, of police statistics at all. So they just accept them at face value and say, you know, the people who commit the most crime, according to official statistics, police statistics, they are the people who commit the most crime in, in society. Other perspectives would be more critical than that. Left realists say that this idea of the typical criminal, so the young, working class, male, is, is unfair. That doesn't tell the, the big picture. Feminists say actually crimes against women are largely ignored in police statistics, but they do admit or agree, I should say, that males commit the most crime, uh, which is the case in official statistics. So feminists have kind of got, got for and against there. Marxists say that the police are part of the repressive state apparatus and crime statistics are socially constructed to criminalise the working class and say that crimes by the powerful, like corporate crime, white-collar crime, are largely ignored by the police and by statistics. 
um, interactionists say that police statistics aren't useful and they unfairly label certain groups. Okay, so moving on to victim surveys. So victim surveys um, ask people whether or not they've been a victim of crime over a given period. So, for example, in the last 12 months, have you been a victim of crime? So the victim surveys do help identify crimes that the police statistics can't access, can't get to. So the dark figure of crime, those crimes that haven't been reported, haven't been recorded because perhaps people are afraid, they don't think it's serious enough those kind of things. Victim surveys get to that. And the largest victim survey is the Crime Survey for England and Wales, which was started in 1982 and asks 35,000 adults and 3,000 children annually whether they've been victims of crime and what types of crime. Um, another famous victim survey was the Islington Crime Survey of 1986, which really highlighted the, the fear of crime in a specific area in Islington in London. So victim surveys can help to get at really specific details like that. Um, however, there are some negatives of victim surveys. So they rely on honesty and memory. So you might not remember that you've been a victim of crime. You might not um, want to oh, you might not want to say that you've been a victim of crime for various reasons. You might be afraid. You might be embarrassed. You don't want to say to to somebody that you've been a, a victim of crime. You might not be aware that you've been a victim of crime if it's a crime like fraud. Um, you might not be aware that you've been a victim of crime. Similarly, if it's something like abuse, you might not be aware that that's actually a crime. Um, and also, this doesn't include victimless crimes. So, kind of drug dealing seen as a victimless crime because the interaction there between the person buying the drugs and the person selling the drugs, you know, there isn't an, a victim in that case. Um, also, crimes against a business. It's not It's not a crime where there's an a individual victim. Next, on to self-report studies. So, self-report studies ask people whether they've committed a crime. So, it's either an interview or a questionnaire. And it does, again, like victim surveys, get to the dark figure of unreported and unrecorded crime. So, it's it's you know, it might be a crime that hasn't been found out by the police. And it can give an insight into criminality. You can ask people, you know, why they committed the crime, you know, what type of crimes they've committed. Um, and it can be longitudinal. You can speak to people over a number of years, go back to them and see how the kind of criminal career works. Um, however, self-report studies like victim surveys rely on honesty and memory. So, that you know they might not remember they've committed a crime they might not want to be honest they might say they've they've committed more crimes than they have um because of the interviewer effect they might feel like that's what they that's what they want you to hear also they might not want to incriminate themselves if they've done something really really bad they might not want to own up to that similarly there might be ethical issues if the sociologist finds out that somebody's been committing awful crimes that the police haven't found out about as a sociologist you know you should perhaps report that and that creates ethical issues there in terms of the research so i think it's pretty clear that by looking at the three main methods that in order to get a, a picture of crime the real picture of crime we need to look at more than one method at once each of them have their benefits but each of them also have the the negatives there so that's something to think about um, I hope that was useful. Please leave any questions um, in the comments. Thank you for listening.